Hi everybody, JD and Zeriris here. I'm going to turn down some volume here in the background. Anyway, uh, we're here tonight, uh, or actually here in this video, uh, to talk about uh, Woodbox Radio's new TimeMate 2 for both uh, SDR software, Perseus, and uh, several other uh, SDR uh, software uh, defined receivers and transceivers out there. But uh, before I go into this little little gem here tonight, uh, I guess it was announced uh, that uh, Flex was no longer going to make our beloved Flex 5000A due to the fact that the manufacturer no longer is going to be providing this particular chassis. So in order to obviously re retool and re-engineer it would cost them a fortune. So plus they have their new flagship uh, the 6700 series out now. So if you, if you didn't get a chance to buy one folks uh, it's too bad. You have to buy a 3000 or a 1500. But anyway I wanted to let folks know that if you did not hear that through the grapevine and again, I heard this from a third party, and he's a pretty good guy, so uh, I pretty much uh, haven't read it on the website, but uh, Flex 5000 has disappeared uh, in the checkout uh, page. So Anyway, again, back to the uh, Woodbox Radio Time Mate 2. I saw this thing come up uh, on the website uh, several months ago, man, probably about six months ago, and uh, of course it was coming soon forever, and then one night I happened to check, and lo and behold there was this add to cart button so I took the dive and ordered it of course these things come uh, I believe it's out of uh, Italy yeah I think it is yeah made let's see yeah Italy and uh, it arrived uh, a couple days ago but due to my work schedule I just now had the opportunity to uh, uh, get it hooked up but a very nice uh, uh, page put up on woodboxradio.com's website uh, and of course a video uh, their first testing and I think if you uh, click on the time mate 2 then you get all the information including uh, size specifications then all the uh, all the things that the, uh, the low unit will work with uh, flex radio systems the ELAD uh, and of course the Perseus and uh, their studio one software from woodbox radio now the thing's uh, 260 euro. I think it worked out to be 300 and I don't know 340 some odd dollars in shipping. Now most of you will probably say Jiminy Christmas. That's a lot of money, and you know I would agree. It's it's a, a lot of money for basically uh, the opportunity to give you some cool looking knobs and a readout. Now of course Flex Control has had this uh, K6TD K6TU unit. And of course, Time Mate, uh, the, the original Time Mate, uh, looked very similar to it, but it was a little more heavy duty. Uh, had some weight to it, and the, it was machined uh, a metal knob. But uh, they really stepped up uh, and uh, really made one superb little unit here. Now, this is a mini mouse here, and not not a full size mouse, but you can kind of see uh, comparison size wise uh, about how big the unit is. So, uh, again got quite a bit of weight to it it's got a, a tilted stance uh, it's kind of tilt back to the operator but let me take you through uh, a couple things and I'm going to show you the uh, software and I'm gonna give you a little warning okay that happened to me tonight now when I went to install the software that I downloaded the uh, time 82 uh, console which is available version 006 beta version it threw up uh, an error uh, code and it was uh, having to do with a DLL uh, MS VCR uh, 100.dll missing okay and I, I did a little search on Google and uh, basically what it came back as uh, uh, missing from your computer and it told you to download the redistributable package of 2010 which I did well it still didn't fix the problem I went to click on the uh, exe it gave me the error so I did a little more reading and I found out that I really needed to install the .x86 version now if you go to let me see here, a little bit of bad camera work here, folks. You go to your C drive, and you go to your, you got your program files, and then your x86 files. If you click on that, this is where Woodbox Radio shows up. So it kind of gave me a hint that I needed to install the x86 version, and I did do that, and voila, the thing started working. Again, you'll need to go to Microsoft Visual Service Pack 1, 
and when you click the download, you're going to be given uh, three different options, 64, 64, and then the, the dot x86. This is the one that fixed it on my Windows 7 machine, okay? The 64-bit uh, didn't work. So if you get that error, don't get frustrated. Go to the Microsoft website and get this x86 version, and hey, it fixed the problem, and then the software, as you see, uh, version 006 uh, Time 8 2 Cat console comes up. Now, what you're going to need uh, in addition to this, you're going to need, well, I'm sitting here clicking on something that shouldn't be clicked on. Here we go. I'll bring it up this way. Okay, you need the virtual serial ports uh, emulator, okay? And I've had these COM ports set up for both uh, digital work and uh, running some other wood box radio software. But basically what I've got is I've got uh, COM5 uh, in the CAT uh, control on the uh, Flex SDR software, and then I've got COM6 connect. So basically I've got a split, uh, or a pair, all right, uh, to communicate with the unit. I'm going to go ahead and close that down. Uh, so again, if I go to uh, CAT control uh, settings, uh, you see I'm on COM5, and it's talking to COM6, basically. So, that's how you get uh, the unit working. And, uh, uh, again, you've got uh, uh, connect to a power SDR, and you've also got a setting of uh, the Perseus uh, software-defined receiver. Now, here's some cool features about this thing. Here, you got your, your settings for your steps, etc., how quick the VFO dials, uh, your key five and six function, uh, band up and down. But over here, you've got uh, the ability to change the background color for both receive and transmit by adjusting the RGB uh, numbers, and you can play around with that. And then you've got uh, multi-receive as well as the uh, transmit, and of course, contrast for the uh, actual display. So that's pretty much the software for the uh, Time A2 uh, console. Now, I'm sure they're going to probably make some more changes uh, in the future and add some features that maybe are, were in the works. But uh, right now, uh, we're on sitting at 144 megahertz. Uh, everybody knows me. I am a weak signal enthusiast. Uh, the KX3 currently sitting on 432, and I just got to working with Steve up in Chicago. And, of course, uh, I'm looking south right now, and then... Of course, here's the associated uh, transverters uh, for both two, 432, 1296. And my beloved Henry, uh, a 3004, with the 8938 tube has been running here at idle. And it, it, a lot of people haven't seen this uh, amplifier. Uh, Henry started putting these in these small, uh, small cases, it looked like a repeater case. And uh, I happened to resurrect this one which had been sitting in Arkansas for about 12 years in a non-climate controlled home out in the country and uh, it took me a little bit of work but I did get it fixed and up and running and got a real strong tube and of course made my custom decal and of course I've, I've got another amplifier, 2 meter amplifier for uh, 2 meters uh, lunar link and what I did was I made another uh, custom plate with switches to run these fans to blow the hot air off the top of the 432 out the back now, not to get away from the uh, wood box radio, Time Mate 2. Uh, it's going to be hard to do a split screen because I'm not I'm not set up for that. And by the way, this is the uh, the last time I'll be editing on Sony Vegas. I moved up to a Mac and will be editing and doing all videos in Final Cut Pro. So you should see quite a change in my video production. But anyway. Uh, the, uh, the VFO knob, of course, it controls the primary VFO, but a quick click will take you to VFO B. In this case, I'm sitting on 17 meters. Another click back uh, takes me back to 2 meters. Now, uh, uh, this button here on the left, E1, uh, can control the volume. And, of course, when you turn it, you've got your volume control setting. I'll get, I'll get zoomed in here a little bit better. And when you click it, you get your a gain and you turn the gain you get that and then when you click it again you get squelch one more click you get uh, DRV and then you get noise blinker and then back to volume uh, the button on the left here E2 does your high low cut filter it does your shift it does your RIT and your XIT 
and then back to high. But if you, if you turn your high filter, then here's your bandwidth settings, 2.8, etc. So that pretty much shows you those three main controls. Now the okay F2 function F2 button uh, gives you noise reduction. F1 gives you changes your color, does something else. Uh, F3 turns your noise blinker on and off. Uh, F4, let me see what F4 does. Uh, is your A and auto automatic notch. And then let's see, we got five. I'm trying to remember what five gives you. Five uh, changes your band up and down. So basically, you go up and down band with five and. Well, I thought I thought it was five and six. I guess five. And then what does six do here? Yeah, five, five, five changes your band band as well. So. Uh, five and six programmable, of course, uh, to the software. Let me see here. Yeah, f uh, five and six function is your band plus and minus, so it takes you up and down the band. Anyway, another neat feature besides being able to change the color, uh, and I'll show you real quick adjusting the receive. If you if you change the uh, uh, the sliders, okay, right there, uh, this is what happens. Okay, you get. In that case, it kind of goes more white. If I bring uh, more green into it, it gets darker blue. And of course, um, then, I, then, we're going, then we're going green. And bring it back to blue. Now, one more neat feature I'll show you. And uh, I'll just grab the uh, key switch here, the key line switch, and key it. When you key it, uh, it changes colors to, uh, of course, red. Now you can change those trans, uh, that transmit color as well uh, to anything you want, green, blue to green, whatever. So, uh, and of course, I forgot to tell you, there's your USB indicator. Basically, USB connectivity, uh, it, Windows 7 recognizes it as a USB uh, device, uh, so no special drivers to load. But again, you will need the uh, virtual uh, uh, virtual software uh, to uh, to run this thing, virtual serial ports emulator. And I think if we go to the website, uh, they mention it there at the bottom of the page. Yeah, virtual serial port emulator by uh, Etalogic uh, or other virtual com port manager. So there you have it. Uh, Woodbox Radio's new Time Mate 2. Uh, pretty neat uh, unit. And again, if it's uh, something that you know you like, uh, like me, then you maybe make the investment. Uh, real quick shipping. I uh, ordered it uh, through PayPal and uh, got it, uh, I think it was right at about uh, less than two weeks. So real quick shipping on their part.